Hey, this is Ralph, and I want to continue working on this little web page here. Let's see, we've got our head section with some key elements in there. In the body of the page, I've got a headline one, and I've got a couple of paragraphs, and then right at the end of the last video, I threw in a couple of headline twos. So, headline twos, common tag, or in this particular headline, common tags within HTML. So the tags, of course, are the words of this particular language. And the more tags you know, then the better you're going to be able to use them efficiently and effectively. Some are going to be super fast and easy to memorize. So you're going to always use headlines. Headline ones and headline twos are very, very popular. And of course, there'll be paragraphs. Whenever you want to have a string of text together, I want you to use paragraphs. So you're going to mention, you're going to memorize those quick, and you're going to use them in every single web page you make. Now, there's a bunch of other tags too. So over here, this is over at Web Designer Ledge, uh, WebDesignLedger.com. And I went to, they've just got a, and you could do this, you could just search for HTML, HTML5 cheat sheet. And this is a huge list of HTML tags. And they've got a section of a whole bunch of new ones, by the way, up here. I'm going to kind of ignore that for a quick second. And I'm going to look at this existing HTML4 and 5 tags. So these are tags that have been around for a while and are still quite useful. Um, and there's a ton of them on here. Some you will hardly ever, ever use. So if you're doing, a big table, you might use a T body, T foot, there's also a T head. Um, there it is, T head. You might use those, but those are super rare. They only come up in cases where you're doing really complex tables with multiple headers and footer rows and things like that. And there's some other really rare ones. Um, SAMP, sample computer code. You're probably not going to use that one too often. But there's some on here that are quite common. Uh, right here at the very top left, is basic comment tags. So we can go to our editor and you can put comments right inside of the HTML. And this is how it looks. Hmm. There are six levels of headlines, one through six. There we go. This is called an HTML comment, and it's how you put a chunk of information in your web page that has no effect whatsoever on the web page. So it's angle bracket, exclamation, hyphen, hyphen, and then you finish it with a hyphen, hyphen, angle bracket. So basically, that's a comment built right into the HTML. So that's a pretty good that's a pretty good one there. And of course, uh, anchor tag for hyperlink. We'll, uh, I'll do a bunch of those in another video. So if you have one of these lists convenient to you, whether it's in a book or you find one online that you print off and keep handy, then you're going to have a really good kind of checklist of things to experiment. It's also going to make a little bit more sense when you look at somebody else's code. So I'd like to take a second here and let's just jump over and we'll look at um, Apple's web page. And I'll just go to a blank area of their web page. I can find one They're right up in here. And I'm going to go ahead and view their page source code. So the more you spend time with HTML, then the better off you're going to be at looking at somebody else's markup and starting to figure out exactly what's going on and what they're doing. And pretty soon, if you're following along with me, the more you view other people's source code, the more familiar it's going to be. So even with the very little that we've done, if we go to Apple's web page and look at their source code, you've got a really good idea of what this is right up here on their line one. It's their doc type definition and they're using HTML5, sort of. Then they have an opening HTML tag and they do have the language attribute in there, English US, but they've got a few, they've got a few other things in here too, the XML namespace. Basically what they're doing at Apple, and you'll see this at a lot of websites, they're using a little bit of old technique mixed with a little bit of new technique. So this XML NS attribute that you see, and even this XML language attribute you see, this is a slightly older way of doing things. And when I say older, I mean from just a couple years ago. Um, so right now it's all you need is the HTML tag with the language attribute. Then they go into here and they, they start off with a meta character encoding, but their meta tag looks a little bit different than the one I just typed for you. If you recall, here's mine right up here. So mine looks a lot smaller, and that's because I'm using the HTML5 method. They're using the XHTML method. Um, and you notice that little slash there. 
in XHTML 1.0, you had to put a slash at the end of your meta tags, your image tags, your break tags. If a tag didn't have a closing tag, you put a slash in there. So that was a habit I had to break because I used to have to type that all the time too. Now in meta tags, you don't have to put that slash in there. So if you see somebody putting the slash in there, it doesn't mean it's bad code. It just means they've got a habit from the olden days of a couple years ago, and they haven't broken that habit. They haven't changed that habit yet. So I don't want you to be too worried about it. And of course, on a big site like Apple's, where they, you know, Apple's, where they have multiple people working on the site, you're going to get some people using only the latest and greatest, and you're going to get some people that are still doing it in a slightly older way.